Uh, so I am a uh, Skype for Business MVP, that's formerly Link MVP. Uh, there's about 19 of us in the country. I've seen a ton of deployments. Um, I'm sure you're probably going to have some questions about some of the 10 things. Um, I'm actually going to ask you, just because we are already past our time, uh, to save the comments or write them down to the end. Come find me. If you have questions throughout the week, I'm at Ignite all week. Uh, I'm in the Skype for Business booth tonight. I'm manning it tonight. I'm manning it uh, Monday morning from 10 to 12. Just come find me if you need anything. Uh, but uh, because we are short on time, uh, we're going to move through here pretty quick. And some of the things we already actually talked about uh, in a few of the uh, presentations. So again, this is uh, 10 things I wish every designer knew about Link. There's uh, some pitfalls, some things people don't consider or they consider too late. And the first one is just physical versus virtual. Uh, Microsoft Link is, uh, and Skype for Business is virtualized, supported on every, every single server role. So a lot of people think no brainer, right? We're going to just virtualize the whole thing because that's how we do things. Uh, many, many, many uh, pros to virtualization. But there's a big reason why not. And then when we start talking about these audio, these video, these real-time communication workloads, uh, the th thing to keep in mind is these are very large servers. Microsoft recommends 32 gigs of RAM and uh, 8 to 12 cores. Um, and because there are real-time audio flowing through it, we can't have any performance hit. And because we can't have any performance hit, that means we're not allowed, uh, what's not supported on virtualization environment is no live migration, no dynamic memory, no thin provisioning, no oversubscription of your host. We have to have a one-to-one -one core layout. And it's things like reserve processors are recommended. recommended you know. Because of all these things, you need to know that your virtualization team has to be on board if you're going to virtualize Microsoft Link. Because everything may seem smooth. I just ran into this a couple weeks ago with one of my clients, uh, or a client that we took over, rather. Uh, they said, well, Link looks like it's only using 16% of our CPU, so that can't be the problem. But we actually found that because of some new servers had been added to the virtual environment, they hadn't kept track of it. The host was now oversubscribed, and the wait time to get to that CPU cycle uh, was just causing breaks in their conference calls. QoS, do you need it? Yes. This is mentioned. You absolutely need it. Uh, you need to uh, figure out what you're going to QoS. Is it just audio? Is it video? But you need it. I don't care how good you say your network is, how good the network guy says it is, how much bandwidth you have. Uh, you need it to be prioritized. Backing it up. I see this wrong in, uh, I'd say, 90% of deployments I walk into. Snapshots, SQL exports, they're great. You might be able to restore from that, but that's not the supported restore methodology. The supported restore, backup, and restore methodology are the export-cs commands and import-cs commands. If you are not running these as a scheduled task and there are scripts out there that can run this for you, your, your backups are not supported. So if this is mission critical and you need to call support, you're going to need this. So please, please, please pay attention to this. I see this myth so much. E911. Uh, people take this for granted. They don't really give this the thought that they need to before they're walking in there. And this is more of a unified communications problem. Than a, than a link problem or a Skype for business problem, it's because the clients are everywhere. It can't just be a phone number tied to an E911 uh, location anymore because you can be logged into multiple locations at once. You could be roaming. Uh, and what that means is networking and cable management become critical. You're, you have to have policies and business process around this now. So it's something that really has to be taken into consideration. One, one low level network guy just plugging in a cable, moving it up a patch to see if that works better, he may have just changed their entire 911 location. Windows 7 and below don't support link layer discovery protocol. So locating them to any kind of granular port level solution for 911 as well is also not supported. Uh, so there may be uh, third party solutions that may be required if you need granularity beyond the subnet layer level for these soft clients. And again, that's a Windows issue. You're going to have the same issues with Cisco or Avaya or anything that lets you send audio and 911 calls through a soft client. Session border controllers. This is, uh, Alan asked me about this. It sound, sounds like I've been bit up with this one. Um, I have. Um, <laughs> there are direct certified SIP trunks that go, right, that go right in the link. I still, even with those, even with level threes, I still say, please use a session border controller. Why? Security. 
You know, it, it's your firewall, flexibility, the, it's your router, your, your ability to, to route between uh, different devices and, and do SIP header manipulation and things that you may not realize you need. It, it lets you change telcos later uh, without, uh, or, or add backup telcos later that may not be directly supported with Microsoft Link. I actually have a client uh, this last week. They are moving data centers and they found out that their client, who said they were supported with Link in the past, now says they no longer support T SIP over TCP. They only do it over UDP because they changed their back end. So now as soon as they move to their new data center, they're going to have to get the session border controller now. The project is slowed down. There's all kinds of additional ramifications. Plus, it makes up for additional missing features. Things like music on hold, for example. You've got uh, Link expects the clients to perform music on hold, and there's a lot of phone endpoints that just do not support music on hold. Audio codes, session border controllers, IP gateways can handle that. They can tell when a call has been put on hold. Uh, it's right in the SIP packet, and they can play that music on hold for you, so you can have that consistent music on hold experience, even though your clients, your Link clients, may not support it. Things like ELIN gateway for 911 purposes, again, critical. Uh, quickly, understand what you're replacing. Uh, if you don't know what you're replacing, if you don't know how it's used, uh, if you don't know if you're replacing all the functionality or if you are taking it away, your best case is that your project is going to be slowed down. Your worst is that it's going to come to a complete stop. Uh, so when you're looking at those phones, perform those full station audits. Figure out what your business processes are and how they're going to change. In that planning stage, remember uh, Scott was here talking about the, the different life cycle. In that planning stage, make sure you understand this before you begin the deployment project. User adoption. This is another one we already talked about. This, this is big. Uh, it's more than just an IM and a phone. So make sure your users know the capabilities that are available to them. Uh, it's a very exciting, uh, you, you heard people are like really excited to get Link and get rid of their old phone. So it's not too hard to build excitement, but just letting them know what they're getting can build excitement. Do not overwhelm them with information, otherwise they're going to glaze over and the day you cut over, they're just not going to know what to do. There's going to be a negative perception and you're going to have to battle that for the next few years. Uh, so let them know what they need to, but not too much, and then afterwards, uh, throughout the user adoption, continue the training. Give them those advanced features, the, the, uh, maybe the best uh, conference calling, conference calling like a pro or effective conference calling. You know, don't have the light source behind you so you're a shadow or things like that. And again, you can monitor the adoption through these different, uh, through, directly through Microsoft Link. Make use of the power management shell, the PowerShell. There are, uh, review the TechNet gallery. There's tons of scripts out there that can make your life easy. The one I mentioned with backups. Uh, I've developed one and actually a GUI interface for dealing with common area phones, which is something that you can't find in the control panel. It's only available through PowerShell. But I find a lot of admins that just say, I don't like the PowerShell. I don't want to deal with it. So they won't work with these common area phones. We have GUIs for this. So please review the TechNet gallery. You're going to find just a, a huge wealth of wonderful tools out there. Monitoring. Uh, SCOM's great, but uh, there, there's so much more. There's uh, for VoIP quality, things like the Audio Code Session Experience Manager, SEM, already mentioned, it's, it's huge. You can actually tell you know, where in your network the, the, the call quality issues are occurring. You can, you can kind of see, especially if you're using Audio Code's phones, if you're using that one voice type of solution, you can really detect where those call issues are. But just, just the, the third party monitoring tools, the SCOM, SolarWinds, Network Nectar for your network, uh, native SQL monitoring, really Take a deep dive. Don't just let it sit there. Don't just trust that it's okay because the servers are up and running and people aren't complaining. Third party tools such as Event Zero, they can give you deeper and of course there are managed service providers out there that can just do all this heavy lifting for you. Uh, so even though you are on premise, maybe you're not in the cloud, you can just take that management burden off and, and kind of take those SLAs away from yourself. Put them on somebody else. Finally, uh, this one was mentioned. Link takes the best of breed approach. So they don't, they don't make the hardware. They, they leave that up to these other parties. But know that there are many, many models to choose from that are link optimized or qualified. So don't go with a gateway. Don't go with a device that is not optimized or qualified because you likely will run into trouble. There's going to be a firmware issue. There's going to be some issue. There's 40 different desk phone models, 20 contact center solutions, 20. 
Uh, not all, some of them are extra PBXs that kind of fake it, but please use link-only qualified hardware. That would be my last, uh, last of the 10. I know we went fast, and I know I made you hold your tongues, um, but if there are questions, I'll, I'll take a few now. Um, and uh, again, you can find me, uh, find me throughout Ignite if you'd like. No, QoS, QoS everywhere. Use group policy to deploy those, those markings right to your clients um, because you don't know where the call quality issue can be and it could be, it could be throttled right near the desktop. Yeah, yes? That, that's true, yeah, yeah. You gotta make sure your switch is on it and make sure that the, everybody says, oh yeah, our QoS is fine. We put it in place. But the prioritization, the bandwidth allocations just never seem to be right. So uh, sometimes the things like the, the SEM can, can turn those things up for you. And yeah. The developer tool that you talked about, or the, the, the free tools, are those, are those vetted in any way to make sure there's nothing malicious in them? Nope. Okay. No, those are, those are so, so the PowerShell tools, there's third party tools, and they're from big companies and are you know respectable companies. The so PowerShell tools, um, no. <laughs> I don't have anything malicious in mind, but. Yeah. No, but like, but there's no there's no one monitoring to make sure that the code is safe, right? It's all, all up to the end user to make sure. It's all up to the administrator. That that's what. I'm, but if you look at the tool, if you understand PowerShell enough to look at them, they're usually pretty short. These aren't like forty thousand lines of code. These are couple hundred lines of code and you can zip through and see that there are no calls to outside services. They are just basically exported this or show off GUI front end for that. Yeah. I just have one follow up question. Yeah. I do use the export tools for backing everything up. Yep. But I don't know how to validate that the backup works properly in the is good as your if it if it runs and successfully runs then I'm good or is there something I should check on after? Okay, so another thing, I, I stopped at 10, but uh, <laughs> a, a, lab environment, a, a lab environment where you are testing the restore of this, make sure that it's extremely rare to see link fail. Um, but know that you, you can restore from scratch, from the ground up if you can, and just do that in a virtual lab. Make sure that you've been through the process once or twice uh, so that when that disaster does strike, especially when we're talking about a phone system, that you're not Googling, that you're following your own instructions and, and run those drills. All right. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you.